food is all energy. Mm -hmm. So when you connect food and energy together, it starts to make sense. Like, Mm -hmm. for example, if you eat like a super heavy meal, like for example, my family, especially my grandma was alive. This was like, you know, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. We don't do it no more, you know? Yeah. But we used to go to church every Sunday. And, you know, coming home from Sunday church, you know, my mom used to have a whole Mm -hmm. meal, potatoes, eggs, like just a good, like, breakfast, Mm -hmm. right? And then after you finish eating the breakfast, like, how do you normally feel? You're like, you want to go to sleep. No, I want to go to sleep, take the best night of my Mm -hmm. life. But that's normally because the food you just ate energetically depleting your body Mm -hmm. um so when you start to eat food that not only is created by god but it's also food that are fueling your body with energy um minerals like you literally would start to feel like awake like alive Mm -hmm. yeah so like literally i tell people like you eat to live Mm -hmm. not eat to die Mm -hmm. you know like if you're eating food as alive like an apple that's normally where fast food came from like the thought of fast food is like grabbing an apple grabbing a banana like that's mm. that's fast. Right, right. You still got to cook it. Mm-hmm. That's not fast. Mm-hmm. It's just processed so that you can make it fast and then it can, you know, satisfy you however, you know, however you right. feel. Mm-hmm. And it's, I do understand, I think for some people, if they're just kind of like operating on survival and it's like, yeah, I would love to cook my child a gourmet meal every night and have it be colorful and mm-hmm. nice and balanced, you know. What advice would you give to people who feel like, transitioning to a more plant-based lifestyle is like like I don't have the time I don't have the energy it's perspective Mm -hmm. like once you change your perspective on an act of something Mm -hmm. then you don't view it no more like for example if you're constantly cooking every day and you're like oh my god I'm so tired of cooking every day but like look at the act of it like I'm serving someone like Mm -hmm. this is like the I think food is one of like the biggest service of people. You're actually feeding yes. the nation. You're feeding the people, your community. Mm-hmm. So when you start to view it that in a bigger perspective, you start to be like, wow, like this is like a bigger, a bigger purpose. Mm-hmm. So cooking, like cooking your daughter a meal, mm-hmm. or cooking your family a meal, mm-hmm. should be a priority because you're nourishing them, mm-hmm. and nourishing them can like help your son be more focused in school right or help your husband like you know do better at job mm-hmm. or just be more like it's a it's more of like a self-love type mm-hmm. of action for me so if you change your perspective right on the actual act of it then you're actually like will be like more open to be like okay i'm doing it mm-hmm. and then plus if you also change your perspective on how you feel when you're doing it, right? then you feel better. Because mm-hmm. then now your family can taste the love in your food. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not just be like, oh, I'm just eating this. Right. I feel like when people talk about diet, like, and just growing up thinking, like, when I was a little girl, it's like looking at the magazines, anytime anything had to do with food or diet, it was always, like, image-based and, like, mm-hmm. to be... Skinny, skinny and have a like six abs. Pack. Right, right. And it's like, one, you never know what's what people talk about with their doctor. Like, it really doesn't matter what's on the yeah. outside. And something that I've really learned in the past year is maybe on a surface level, you can look a certain way to the world but on the inside it's like what are your vitamin d levels look like are you getting enough sunlight do you have enough iron in your body and what are you really- taking your sea moss yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but for real and i think that like once people understand like how real this conversation is it can help go back to what you were talking about even mental health right yeah. like if you feel like oh, I don't have energy to do the creative projects that I want to do, therefore I'm going to be hard on myself and then I'm going to be depressed and it's just a bad day. When yeah. in reality it's like, well, actually let's look at like what did you have for breakfast? Like did you really feed your body what it needed to give yourself the inspiration, the energy to like execute what you're trying mm-hmm. to do today? And so I just hope that from this conversation people can just take like two seconds <laughs> to just go research themselves. I just hope that, yeah, exactly, like yeah. everything is going back inwards. Mm-hmm. So you have have to everything in life is going to always make you go back to look at yourself inside Mm -hmm. so either it can be school it could be friends relationships and and of course your diet I think Mm -hmm. your diet mainly at one point is going to make you look inside like you're 50 you're sick you got something going on you go to the doctor they're going to be like you have to change your body Mm -hmm. and then now you're looking at yourself and inside like what can I do to not have diabetes or Mm -hmm. not have health issues. Mm -hmm. You know, it always goes back to like looking back at, back in within yourself. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel like, especially if you feeling some type of emotional situation, Mm -hmm. you should definitely be looking at the food that you're eating. Yeah. Because it ties 
hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Like there's never not one day that I don't go without taking my herbs mm -hmm. and I have a bad day. Mm -hmm. Like I will have a bad day if I probably don't take my herbs. Right. More because of how emotionally I feel. Mm -hmm. And people don't really know how you feel emotionally. You know. You can right. act like everything's fine. Mm -hmm. But you know how you really feel. And then taking that mask off and coming home and then like really looking at yourself, it really plays a big part because you're waking up every day. Nobody wants to wake up every day and like pretend like they're okay. Right. You won't actually feel like it. And then when you actually are vibrating on a higher frequency, you you attract better jobs, mm -hmm. better friendships, better opportunity. So it's like the life that you want always starts within yourself, but you have to look in yourself to, in order for you to actually like take those steps to know like, okay, what can I do to like be a better person? And not just be a better person, just like food wise, because food is just a small part, like a small, mm -hmm. small part but at the same time, it's, it plays such a big role. Right. Like, it plays, like, probably the main role. Mm -hmm. Because if you're sick you and you're ill, you can't physically do things. Right, right. Like, you can't, you, you really can't enjoy life at its ultimate bliss mm -hmm. if you're constantly revolving in, like, being unhealthy right. mentally, physically, emotionally, all of it. And I think once you take, like, one tiny little step and then you do see, because you will see the results. Immediately. Like, it's science. It's like, <laughs> literally, and it, it's like, it's like common sense. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. wow, like, this is all I have to do to feel great? Right. And it's like, yeah, but you're so, you're so you're willing to feed instant gratification mm -hmm. than long term. It almost seems unreal kind of how easy it is. It's like, okay, yeah, we get one body, we get one life, and all we have to do is take care of it. Right. <laughs> and then it's like, wait, but no, we don't have to buy this. Yeah, we don't have to buy into this yeah. plan and whatever. And it's like, no, it's really that easy. And that's why, like, it's kind of so unfathomable. Or it's like we're not used to having that freedom and that discipline like you were talking about earlier, right? It's mm -hmm. like when we as humans are kind of told this truth of, like, oh, yeah, you just have to, like, eat natural foods from the earth and make sure you take care of yourself and get your exercise and your sunlight and pray, meditate, whatever it is. It's like, mm, I'd rather go buy this diet Bye. plan. Uh -huh. you know I mean? mm -hmm. So I think, like, once you do start making those tiny, tiny little decisions, and you will see the results because, like we said, it's like science. It's just how your body works. It's going to make you interested in doing more research now. But that's the thing that people don't want to do. People right. don't want to do the research. Right. People don't want to, like, do the work. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to be successful at anything, mm -hmm. you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. You have to be like, all right, I'm going to do this. And you have to have some type of discipline because there's no way that you're going to sit here and tell me, like, eat. People will like people were willing to pay thousands of dollars and put their health in someone else's hand and be like, yeah, you know, this diet plan is going to change my life. A lot of us, a lot of us, and I, I wouldn't just say the American, like, people, because, mm -hmm. you know, I would say just everybody. When you get sick, you go to the doctor. Right. Just how someone goes to school to be a chef, they went to school to be a doctor. They wasn't mm -hmm. born and have, like, these magical powers to heal your body. Mm -hmm. Your body was made to heal itself. Ooh. You what? <laughs> so it's just like yeah. it's just like why don't believe in yourself enough? Mm. You know what I'm saying? That your body is able to actually heal itself and provide you everything that you possibly need to be successful, to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's just like we we don't believe in ourselves enough. We rather like pay this doctor or pay whoever mm -hmm. to even people with even us, like even us women, we don't believe in our own beauty. Mm -hmm. We have to put on makeup and mm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, why can't we just believe in like our true essence and everything that we have? Like, not just from our physical body, from ourselves. Like, anything in this body that I feel like it's God created is mm -hmm. seventy percent water, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And like, our cells are that the, mm -hmm. the earth itself, like mm -hmm. everything. So if you really start to like really dive deep in, you can really find answers in like the simple things in our mm -hmm. earth. And be like, oh wow, I'm connected like this way. I'm connected this way. But a lot of the times, people really would prefer to have their faith and their you know and their trust in someone else that they're gonna heal them and they're right. gonna save them. Like even God, like we do something messed up, and like yo God, yeah. If you help me this one time, I would never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you should have never did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. know the information. Your intuition, your body, every time will tell you exactly what it needs. You mm -hmm. just have to, like, listen and tap in and look for and like and actually look inside. But a lot of people don't do that. I'm trying to do more research on kind of, like, my family's roots. But I think for a lot of indigenous cultures, spirituality and holistic wellness was a huge part of 
our lives and our communities. Women, in many cases, were like the herbalists and the healers mm -hmm. of the communities. And so I think that this conversation inspires me to do more research. I'm definitely not like an expert on the topic. No. But it, it really is, it, it kind of makes me sad to think that like at one point in time, that maybe my family was more tapped into the earth and, and more natural forms of, of healing. But then because of, you know, Western medicine and like the world that we live in now, we're yeah. kind of like... My family in DR, they were like, oh, you got pink eye? Oh, oh I got something for you. Exactly. It's, it's, in the, it's in the backyard. And then they just grab a little leaf, mm -hmm. little mash it up. They were like, put this on your eye when you go to sleep and you wake up, it's done. Right. But that's because they didn't have all the, you know, like all the technology and the things that we do have here in the mm -hmm. West End. It's like, to me, it's like, why are we so detached from that? Right. You know, like, right. what what is it? And it's just, it's just, we lazy. Mm -hmm. We lazy. That's really what it is. And also, it is important to realize that we've gotten to this place because of the society that we live in. You know what I mean? I think it is, it breaks my heart. And so that's why it's exciting to have this conversation for people who like have never been exposed to this kind of a conversation before these ideas. It's like, yeah, like maybe do, let me do a little research on this. Let me see what like my ancestors used to practice. Yeah. Because I think the more that we like tap into where we've come from, we're just going to uncover so many beautiful things about how we can occupy space in this world we live in today. You know yeah, what I mean? of course. Like, or like how how can our ancestors influence us to make an impactful, yes. you know, an impactful change? Mm -hmm. If you know where you're from, there there's a lot of things that you can gravitate to that will make you also feel like I don't want to be a part of too much of this Western, you know, right. society. Like this is cool to have. Mm -hmm. It definitely makes life easier here. Sure. But it's important to know where you where you come from, you know, your culture. And then not only that, but like, you know, what are you supposed to be eating? You right, know what I'm saying? Like, right. what, what is your blood type? Like, all these things mm -hmm, matter, you mm -hmm. know. And not only that, but like to really tap in to just yourself. Because everybody is made differently. Everybody processes their thoughts, their emotions, everything differently. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, what, what lifestyle works for you? Like, I wake up every day at 5 in the morning. Meditate, work out. That works for me. Wow. Some people, it'll work for them. Mm -hmm. But it, they have their own routines. They have their own patterns and their own, um, I would like to say, lifestyle mm -hmm. that kind of like helps them be a better person. Mm -hmm. I wasn't born alkaline. Mm -hmm. I was eating all the craziness right. that <laughs> it was out there. It wasn't until I started seeing people in my family getting like really sick and mm -hmm. then like death after another death after another death. And it's like, my family don't do, like, none of these crazy, like, my family is good people. Mm -hmm. Like, why are they dying, like, such a tragic way? Mm -hmm. And I started realizing, like, it's the food that we're eating. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it goes back to our culture. Like, it's been my mom, my grandma, my great aunt. This is, like, how they've been eating for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, being able to tap into yourself. I now, like, my family, when they get sick, they call me. Yo, and I got a headache. What can I do right now? And that makes me happy because it's like they're also like just opening their mind yeah. and going back to like traditions of way back before we had all these things that right. they didn't even know. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they knew, but they just lost a sense of it because mm -hmm. it's not around them anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about growing up. My dad grew up on a farm. And so like from a super young age, I remember anytime going home for holidays, we would like kill a cow and skin it and mm -hmm. take out all the mm -hmm. body parts. And that was just kind of like a normal thing for me growing up. That's kind of cool though. It's, it's interesting. I think it's more rewarding when you do it like that because yeah. then you no one know how disgusting. Where it's coming from. Yeah, where it's coming yeah, from. Yeah. And I feel like it's less toxic because they're not so many things are not being injected. You're mm -hmm. eating it right then. Mm -hmm. Like the meat that we eat has been killed like maybe a month or two ago. Right. And they have to put all these things for it to look nice and pink, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. when you buy it, it's like, oh, this is some nice meat. Right. But you have and no idea. And then it's like, if your family is so used to, like you said, if for generations you've been eating rice and beans and pork and meat and whatever, like what was your experience talking to your family about incorporating more plant-based? Was it like a lot of resistance at first? It was definitely like, girl, mm -hmm. what is that? Right. But it was, it was more like an art for me. Mm. So like when I first became alkaline, I literally was like going through this like short list mm -hmm. of all the things that are alkaline. So pretty much being alkaline is just um, fruits and vegetables and grains that uh, pH balance is seven and higher or mm -hmm. seven point five and higher, mm -hmm. and that that diet is is very exquisite mm -hmm. <laughs> because you're only 
have like wild rice, quinoa. Mm -hmm. Like these are like some type of grains that you can eat, kamut. But it's like, you're like, what is that? I've never heard of it. Or it's just like, no offense, like my family call it like white people food. <laughs> Like quinoa, like what is that? Right. Like quinoa, how do you pronounce it? My family, <laughs> it just doesn't work. But if you really look at it, if you really dig deep into what causes even that thought to be mm -hmm. like even some some type of truth, right, is that and only in white communities mm -hmm. you have accessible to healthy foods. Right. So when you go to the healthy communities, you see your Whole Foods, mm -hmm. you see you know, a green juice or like herbal, herbal store. Yeah, right. or even a nice park for mm -hmm. you to enjoy, like mm -hmm. a good smoothie. Like it, it's just, it's just health is more easier and mm -hmm. it's provided. We're more in, you know, and not a predominantly white community. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see junk food. Right. Quinoa, you'll probably find that at Whole Foods. You're not gonna find that at like a local bodega. bodega. <laughs> yeah. They're not, you don't have that. But mm -hmm. it's also, is because we don't also de like demand it, right? You know, it's a supply and demand thing. So mm -hmm. in in different communities, they'll have different things that people would normally mm -hmm. buy. Like I'm from Brooklyn, so all around us there was nothing but like Chinese restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. candy fried chicken, pizza shops, like bodegas, like right. eight bodegas in one mm -hmm. corner, and it was just like because that was what we were constantly buying. Well, and then you take the train a few stops in, yeah, and then you see like more Whole Foods, acai bowls, juice bars. You're like, like wow, right. and then you taste it, but it's because we don't know and we're mm -hmm. not aware and we're not open to it. And and it's funny too because you'll see that they're tapping into to these indigenous roots or like, you know, tapping into other cultures, right? That like, you know, we don't even really know about too much, but it's like these communities are benefiting from this. Does this make sense? But white, yeah. no offense, cameras. <laughs> right. No offense, mm -hmm. but white people have been benefiting from black people for decades, mm -hmm. decades, mm -hmm. like before slavery. Mm -hmm. Like they've been taking everything and then just creating it, uh, like creating it, Packaging their it, own, branding yeah, it, branding and it differently, it to us. <laughs> and reselling it to us. And then you know we we pay for mm -hmm. it, and again put our life in someone else's hand instead mm -hmm. of us doing our own research, mm -hmm. us creating our own black communities where we have the herbal stores, mm -hmm. where we have all these things in these small communities, and then provide the food, provide the like. For me, all I did was with my alkaline food was literally like taking my mom's recipes mm. and what they cooking and looking through my list of alkaline food, like, okay, I can't use white rice, but I could use quinoa. Mm -hmm. Or I can use, you know, platanos, but I could use burro bananas. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just supplementing, like, certain foods and certain objects and then just using the same seasonings mm -hmm. and creating the flavor and then plating it. Mm -hmm. Like, I work with very successful people. I'm mm -hmm. very grateful for that. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're the best guy, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I was, I used to go to these restaurants and it's all like this fancy, like octopus and, and just stuff. And I'm like, I want my food to look like that. Right. But I don't want it. I don't want to eat it like that. Mm -hmm. And that's where my art and plating my food came from. Mm -hmm. And like the way I played it, it has to be artistic. It has to be mm -hmm. like some luxury stuff because I am eating luxury food. God created it. It's Amen. nourishing my body, my cells, my entire being. Mm -hmm. So hell yeah, like I'm going to plate this and you're going to be like, Damn, you still look like that? Like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Even the way that you plate your food is art in itself, so that's why I'm like, embrace the artist in you. Yes. But yeah, I think your path is really interesting because you started out painting, painting in high school, right? Yeah. Transitioned to makeup. Mm-hmm. And then worked with names that we see everywhere. <laughs> like, yep. you have a beautiful roster of people that you worked with. Thank you. And then what kind of inspired you to get into plant-based cooking and kind of approaching nutrition as a form of self-care? So at first, it, it like food wasn't something that I even consider like anything important. It was mm -hmm. just like, okay, I just need to eat something, mm -hmm. feel kind of full, and then go about my day. Right. Um, it wasn't until like I got into this, I would say like early 2018, 2019, mm -hmm where I was working um, with a group of people at that time and I was very depressed, like mm. extremely depressed. And I wasn't just depressed emotionally, but like every part of my ounce of being did not want it to just be on earth mm. at all. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I got into that really dark place 
that I was like, yo, I need to get myself out. So, mm -hmm. like, I was trying everything, like, working crazy, like, thinking, like, work was going to, like, make me more successful and success mm -hmm. was going to bring me more happiness. Mm -hmm. um, then I was, you know, kind of, like, being antisocial, like, maybe it's the people around me. So I went through all these phases of, like, trying to find out what was, like, really just energetically bringing me down. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came across food. And honestly, like, majority of the time you go buy some food, you don't really look at the back of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. I didn't start doing that till like, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was you like... You inspired me to start doing that. <laughs> I don't know if it was you or something else that I saw, but it was, like, if you can't pronounce whatever is on it don't pick don't, it up and don't pick it up yeah because if you can't stuff. say it then why are you eating it right right and if you gotta google it to mm -hmm. know what it like what it is mm -hmm. it's ridiculous like if i'm eating an apple it should only be an apple mm -hmm. it shouldn't be citric acid and potassium right. blah, blah 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 and even now too now that kind of food brands are getting hip on the sense that people are doing more research and realizing how much sugar and processed foods and ingredients are in the foods that they'll start putting like green leaves stickers on it yeah like or organic green. right and then it's like you really look at like the added sugars or whatever and yeah i think that like if nutrition and health and wellness is like not something that you're typically into talking about if anything i would just say approach it from a self-care and like a mental health perspective yeah. because that's really what opened my eyes to this conversation you're just someone that made it look really accessible and so i really appreciate that were there people that you already within your community that you were looking up to for like inspiration or were you kind of the trailblazer in your family or in your community? I would definitely say I'm the trailblazer. I have friends who are vegan mm -hmm. um, and I have friends who introduced me to veganism. Like okay. they made me watch like the, you know, like the first vegan, watch all the vegan I documentaries. I haven't watched any of them. Uh, they're very traumatizing. They're right. very mentally, I mean, it's a lot of good information. I feel mm -hmm. like it's important for you to know where your food is coming from, what, like, what are they doing, how they're sourcing it, mm -hmm. you know, like how it's getting to you why it's packaged the way it's packaged how all of these things are all connected like dairy is you know they promote a lot of like breast cancer and like the yogurts and stuff but the dairy is the main thing that causes cancer mm -hmm. like yeah, no, we'll talk about that but okay <laughs> uh you know but like you know it, and it's like all connected you know mm -hmm. so when we start to like dive deeper and things like that I mean unless you have somebody around you then it becomes more easier but like mm -hmm. I'm the person that all my friends when they come to my house they're like oh what you gonna cook today yeah and then it just be like what like this is this is this is that like mm -hmm. how do you make it and it's just people be like oh I know about being like a pescatarian and vegan mm -hmm. but like alkaline like mm -hmm. what is that and it it wasn't until I, I would say like I heard about Dr. Sabi and like how he did it and things like that that made me be like, okay, what can I use my art and how can I use my talent to also produce something bigger? I think also with COVID is what made me really just not even want to do makeup anymore because it was like, mm -hmm. it's so much going on in this world. Like, how can I use my talent to be do something bigger than myself? And I don't view food just as food. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like, okay, I'm just going to put some avocado on this bread and make a sandwich. Right. You know, it's more like, okay, this avocado has like all these vitamins and neutrals mm -hmm. and nutrition and I'm looking at it as like this cold, beautiful avocado. You probably right. just looking at it like a regular avocado and mm -hmm. I'm like looking at like all the benefits and like its power that it has and then once we ingested it and it's put in our body, mm -hmm. like the magic that it does to our body and how mm -hmm. it fuels our brain, our cells, like everything. So that's how I look at food. So mm -hmm. when I'm preparing a meal for somebody, I'm preparing like all of these deliciousness of nutrients and minerals mm -hmm. that are going to fuel not just your body, but like your entire soul. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh wow, like I feel good when I eat this and mm -hmm. it tastes good. And I think that like once we kind of recognize that if the only time diet and nutrition is brought up in like a losing weight conversation, I think that can scare people away from even like doing the research, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I think when some people, when you talk, just even saying vegan they're like oh my oh god, god right yeah you know these I mean? vegans right and it's like it's it is interesting kind of like the attitude or like the wall that will come up sometimes mm -hmm. you're like wait why are you mad like this is really like but i know why you mad because why the food you eating is making it's you making happy you <laughs> and that's why you mad don't be mad because i'm glowing right. and i'm happy right no but i feel like health is not even taught right like mm. even in school like health is not just food period like food 
does play a big part, but like meditating, like how mm -hmm. active are you? Because if you're laying down on the on a sofa all day, mm -hmm. you're physically are going to feel like, ugh, like mm -hmm. even if you oversleep, like say you oversleep for like 10, 15 hours or you sleep for like 10 hours straight, mm -hmm. you're like, dang, I feel tired, but I just woke up from a nap. And it's like, yeah, it's you like, put your body mm -hmm. into this like shock of like rest and mm -hmm. now it's hard for it to just kind of wake up. It's mm -hmm. not until you actually get up and you start to physically move that your body is like, okay, right. I, I'm, I'm moving. So when you start to look, health period was never like something, especially for our people of mm -hmm. color, was never taught in a way like, oh, this is what you're supposed to, it's just like, this is how you're supposed to do it. This is how it looks. Right. If you're skinny, you're healthy. Right. If you're fat, you're unhealthy. I feel like we have to just break down the whole system mm -hmm. and go back to school. Mm -hmm. Like we all have to go back to school mm -hmm. because we all been learning. We have to unlearn so many things mm -hmm. in order for us to even fully digest the truth. Mm -hmm. Cause if we get the ounce of a truth right now, in a place where your mind, your spirit, your whole temple is not even in a place to receive it, you mm -hmm. think I'm crazy. Right. We don't really like want to dive into the in the truth. Even the, in a lot of stuff in the Bible, like mm -hmm. in the Bible it says the herbs are for the healing of the nation. Like, mm -hmm. but we don't really take that term and really put it into life. Everything starts in the mind. So mm -hmm. we have this idea of how we're supposed to look, how we're supposed to eat, how we're supposed to act. And we create this character in our heads mm -hmm. that is completely detached from our life purpose, from what are we put on this earth to do. Mm -hmm. We don't really know, like, the things that we do and the blessings that we have in our gift is going to bless someone else. Mm. So the more you delay to tap into yourself wow. and delay to really walk in your purpose, you're delaying somebody else's blessing. Wow. So, like, I didn't really take the time to learn about myself until I completely lost myself. Mm. Like, everything I was doing that I thought was right mm -hmm. was not it. Like, mm -hmm. I was working every day, you know, working with successful people, and, like, I'm being in all these rooms, but I still don't feel fulfilled. Mm. Now that I'm in a state of wellness, mentally, physically, emotionally and spiritually, any room I'm in, I'm in a state of like, I'm successful. Right. I could be in a room with no shade, Beyonce, what's up sis? I would be in a room with Beyonce and I'd be like, what's up Beyonce? Like, I'm Beyonce too, I'm Beyonce number two. Like, <laughs> it's just it's just a state of confidence and, mm -hmm. and it all is connected. Like food does provide so many things for us that mm -hmm. eventually trickles down to everything that we want to be and become. Health is not just food. Health is just everything, your, your entire being, your, mm -hmm. your entire state of mind. Because you can eat healthy, but then you can also, like, think suicidal. Right. And then you're not mentally healthy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but you don't understand how much food can also help for you to heal mm -hmm. your mental health and mm -hmm. for you to heal your emotional self. I like to say this. When you're less clouded mm -hmm. around you, then your thought are less clouded as well. Right. You know, so if you're constantly in the midair and you're constantly like eating these foods that are keeping you like blocked mm -hmm. and, and just like congested and constipated, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then you can't really process down and you can't really like fully download like everything that you're consuming. I love you that are. you said like not fully tapping into the essence of who you are. Yeah, because right. because you're literally you don't know who you are because you've never even experienced it. You haven't mm. even had a glimpse of who you are. I was reading this book from Queen of Fua. She has this poem in this book, mm -hmm. and it was pretty much like, how can I call myself a woman if I've never even looked at my womb? Mm. And it's just like, dang. Mm -hmm. You know, you start looking at, even like even me, like our menstrual cycles mm -hmm. and things like that. Like, this is the why? woman you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, I just started reading this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, it, and, it's, and you start to really like tap into yourself, and you're like, yo, like, it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, how much of a power as women, we hold within and ourselves. And we do not talk about it. But not only we don't talk about it, it's just like the community. Mm -hmm. The music we listen to was like, you mm -hmm. suck my own. Like, it's, 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 just, it's just degrading women. Mm -hmm. And it's just like taking away again from the power of who we are. We are natural healers. Mm -hmm. We are natural. Like, we, our gift is to Life nurture. Source. Yes. <laughs> like, let's be so real. So it's like, let's be, you know what I'm saying? Let's mm -hmm. be really real and really focus. Even men, like, a lot of men don't want to tap into their femininity. Mm -hmm. They think that being feminine is, is weak or mm -hmm. it's like, ooh, it 
it's game. Right. You know, whatever mm -hmm. it is. It's like, no, you came mm -hmm. from a woman. You are a woman. Mm -hmm. Before you grew that, you was a woman. <laughs> every every baby in the womb mm -hmm. is a woman until it grows out. Mm. The wee wee. Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> like, we're grown. You know what I'm saying? We're grown. <laughs> so it's just, it, you know, it, it, it really goes back into so many ways, like, you know, how us women, we don't, we don't really understand our power. And food mm -hmm. itself, for mm -hmm. us women, whew. Mm -hmm. I mean, the glow, like, and if you want to attract a healthy partner, and mm -hmm. we was just talking about sure. <laughs> buying a, a healthy partner. Papa, mm -hmm. my mic is on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, even finding, like, a healthy partner. Like, mm -hmm. I'm alkaline, so I would love for my man to at least be somewhat alkaline mm -hmm. or be open to transitioning mm -hmm. like if we're talking and you like oh yeah i would never turn vegan right this is me <laughs> y'all see this i'm out cut <laughs> scene i'm out i'm not i'm not just because what i think people and what i read about in sacred woman which i definitely recommend to anybody it's pretty intense intense it's intense but i do tell people i treat it like a bible in a sense where it's like you open it you're gonna learn something you're gonna take something from it mm -hmm. what i learned from it is that even if you don't think that like food is a big deal, it's like, oh, I'm vegan and my partner isn't or whatever. We have a different relationship with food, right? But if you think about like the energy that you're pouring into each other, and so like if you're the person who's kind of putting a lot of time and energy nourishing your body, your spirit, your soul, and then this person is putting a lot of like dead animals into their body, isn't really seeing nutrition as a value, then like they're kind of getting all of your life giving benefits and then they might be taking away from, from all the you. work you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. But not only that, as a woman, we have to honor our temple to know that, mm. like me, I will never have sex with somebody who is not eating the way that I do. Mm -hmm. Because your semen, your, your thing, mm -hmm. is acidic. Mm. Your sweat is acidic. Mm -hmm. So every time you... Put yourself in me, mm -hmm. it's gonna cause some type of reaction. My body's not gonna like it. Mm -hmm. So then it's gonna cause some type of pH unbalanced smell mm -hmm. or something like that. And you're like, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Hey, what's wrong with me? Right. What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, you know? Yeah. So it really goes back to just overall self love and in all mm. kinds of ways. And self love is not just what you eat, how you look, taking an herbal bath and mm -hmm. putting it on Instagram with the flowers and the candles. Right. Like that's the that's the, like the bare minimum of self care. Mm. Self care is actually discipline. Like, I'm not gonna be around certain people. Mm. I'm not gonna work today because my I'm going to honor my body mm. that it doesn't want to work today. And I and I'm not talking about laziness now. I ain't mm -hmm. talking about fatigue <laughs> and want to be lazy. I'm talking about really honoring your body and listening to it and be like, yo, today I'm gonna honor myself that it wants to rest mm -hmm. because. Just like anything else, we go through emotions every day. Mm -hmm. We're happy, we're sad, we're hungry. Like all these type of things are emotions, are, are things that pass just like anything else. So it's mm -hmm. like when you start to really look at, you know, how you feel, and especially when it comes to dating, you know, it's like, yeah, you want a man to, you know, be tall and have all these lists. Mm -hmm. But for me, like the main one is, you know, he's conscious about his eating. Right. Because if you're conscious about your eating, then I'm pretty sure you're going to be conscious about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what kind of energy are you going to be around? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, what energy do you even, like, like to be around? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, if you have discipline in one area, I know that you have discipline in something else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you can you not cheat? Mm -hmm. If there's a room full of bad bitches. Right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it, it, discipline is not just, you know, it's not just one, like, food is not just one form of self-love. There's many different ways of mm -hmm. self-love. Like, learning yourself. Unlearning yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the idea of what we think we should be right now it will change in, in the next few years. Right. Or even in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's just being honorable that, you know, we're constantly evolving, we're constantly changing, and honoring ourselves and each phase that we have, like say, okay, I know that this is what I'm doing is not wrong, it's not right, mm -hmm. um, and this is what I have to work on. So mm -hmm. then, just really try to work on it every day, and then mm -hmm. eventually, that thought or that idea of you wanting to become this person, 
it will be completely erased because you already are. Mm. You are that person. You right. just have to tap into that right. person now, you know? You said something that reminded me. I've had conversations about mental health with, like, my parents or people, more so elders in my community. And the idea of rest and, and as a form of self-care is very foreign to them, right? Because if you grew up in an environment where it was based on survival, like mm -hmm. this idea of like, oh, just take a day off of work just to rest and go run yourself a bath is like, no, like there are bills. It's crazy. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for people who are trying to really trying to incorporate more time for self-care into their schedules, but they just feel like they're already running on empty? Wake up earlier. Mm. Like, I know just how you make time for work and just how you make time for everything else. Yes. Just get up and make mm -hmm. time for it. Like, you have 24 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you, how useful are you really using your 24 hours? Mm -hmm. And also, like, you don't love your job. And if you do, kudos to you. But if you don't love your job, then come, when you come home, give yourself at least 30 minutes to an hour. Or not even that. I would say prepare yourself healthy meals. Mm -hmm. Like if you're working every day, every single day, especially with a job that you don't like, mm -hmm. the most you can do is provide yourself with a, he a healthy meal mm -hmm. so that you can continue to do that job that mm -hmm. you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's just like starting small, mm -hmm. but starting in a place that is small, but is going to create like a waterfall effect. Right, you right. You know, where like, and I always say food will be the, the main thing because if you cook yourself a healthy meal every day, you're disciplining yourself every day, I would choose to eat this way mm -hmm. instead of eating this way. Mm -hmm. And then when you open that mind or that just like window, mm -hmm. you change your perspective and you're like, okay, I have to eat this way so that I can continue to be a better person at mm -hmm. work, so that I can be a better wife, so that I can be a better sister, mm -hmm. so that I can be a better everything. And then that triple effect would be like, oh, now I am a better wife. Now I am a better thing. And then now you start to want better for yourself. And right. then you start to manifest better. It becomes easier, I It feel. becomes easier. Yeah. Everything will become more easier once you start to really just honor yourself, period. Mm -hmm. The moment you start dishonoring yourself and you start to honor something else mm -hmm. is the moment that you slowly start to separate and disconnect from yourself. Right. Like even working a job that you don't like. You work in all those hours and then, you know, you, you wake up and you're like doing it again and then again and again. Mm -hmm. and you start to energetically just be like, ugh. This right. Is, I, it's not you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. It's just something that's making you money, mm -hmm. which is a survival mode that mm -hmm. you're in. But it's like the only way you can get out is if you get out. Right. You have to and get out of that be, survival mode. Right. And it can be little tangible steps. Like I think some people can feel like, hey, I can't go take like a two week trip to Bora Bora or I can't like just go make time. Yeah. Right. Like, it can be as simple as supplements. And this is something that even like the more research I've done and incorporating more like vitamins and supplements to my morning. Mm -hmm. It's like with each one, and I love the way that you talked about the avocado yes! earlier. You really like can look at it, and you can almost like you can call it even like brainwashing yourself. Yeah. Like when you've done the research behind what you're putting in your body, you can like really look at it and be like, "This is going to be the reason I have energy that lasts me until the afternoon." Next and then one. not only that, but you're speaking that, manifesting mm -hmm. that, putting exactly. that in the air. And then ingesting it, and then now it's done. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how I view it as. And not only that, but if you really start to look food like that, people want to be woke. People love using that word. Like, I'm woke. I'm woke this. I'm woke that. Yeah, but, like, when you woke, you could never go back to being unwoke. Right. Because the things that you're seeing, you cannot no longer unsee. Mm -hmm. It's something that it's impossible to do. Mm -hmm. And it's only ignorance It's really the true blindfold with in our community mm -hmm. where people just choose to not want to really tap in right. or not even want to learn. And, and ignorance is just lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you just don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's a separation thing. Like vegans, non-vegans, like vaccinated, mm -hmm. non-vaccinated. Everything is like created in the system to separate us. Right. Nothing is here to unite us. Like, can we talk about what unite us is that fact that we're all here alive. Mm -hmm. We all are literally breathing the same air, mm -hmm. you know? We all created from Earth. Like, mm -hmm. it's all, when we die, we go back to Earth. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's the same, it's the same repeated concept. And, mm -hmm. and it's not until we realize that everything is one, mm -hmm. that's when we'll really start to, like, connect everything and be more thoughtful about everything that we do just as a human, period. Right.
And that's why I love having this conversation. I think that I certainly don't have these conversations every day, but I love talking about this and even just like how you use your platform to talk about health and wellness from like a self-care perspective. And it's also amazing just talking about where your family's from and mm-hmm. like your, the kind of cultural influence on this because I think like for a lot of communities of color, it's like the lack of education and the lack of access yeah. to to this even just conversation period. It's the reason why we do have our, our health disparities yeah. and, you know, things like that. And it's all culture tied. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we don't want to let go of our culture. Yeah, you know, so much has been taken. Exactly. So much has been been modified and then sold back to us, to us things yeah. like that yeah. and it's just like damn like we miss you know uh, my grandma's green beans with yeah you know the fried chicken like you know we all all of us have that one childhood meal mm-hmm. or that one like that one childhood memory that brings us back and makes us feel like 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 ourselves mm-hmm. you know the more i feel like the more happier we are is more when we are in our childlike Oh, 100%. You know, when you're just being yeah. silly, don't yeah. care what people think. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just like, my opinion matters. Like, right. you know, if you tell a kid, yo, this is the best thing that's happening to you, yeah. they'll be like, this is the best thing that's happening to me. <laughs> it's also kind of like that oblivious, kind of like mm-hmm. just shutting down like all the outside noise mm-hmm. and just feeling and embodying what you feel at that moment. Yes. And being happy. And I feel like a lot of the times more when it comes to people of color, mm-hmm. And my community and like especially my family like you know we like food is everything to us right like there's that that good that good mangu with <laughs> with, with platano like yo that mangu <laughs> with some queso frito mm-hmm. and some salami oh what and the cebollita what <laughs> and uh uh Mori soñando. <laughs> but it's just literally thinking about yo i can do this and do it alkaline i will literally cook y'all the best <laughs> Mangu you yeah, ever had in your whole life, okay? And I'm already soñando, and you will enjoy it. And, and, and it's just opening your mind to mm-hmm. it. Like, I'm so happy that I'm that person in my family. Yeah. Because now I feel like if there's someone sick in my family, I can prevent them from getting sick. Mm-hmm. Because it's all really just prevention. Because yes. once you're sick, now your body's in a state of illness. Mm-hmm. So now your body has to literally detox all mm-hmm. the illness in your body in order for your body to come back alive. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. I miss a good queso frito. <laughs> Three go bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially mm-hmm. the queso frito. Like, mm-hmm. you can't, as much as you try to veganize it or alkalinize it, you can't because it's the chemicals that make it taste good. Right, it's right. It's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what was a mm-hmm. dish that you cook now alkaline that your family was like, you're never gonna be able to do that. It can't, you know, be recreated. They like all of them, okay. honestly. Like if I make sushi, they'll be like, "Wow, this is sushi!" Yeah. And I was like, take a picture and put it on Instagram. It's yeah. so cute. <laughs> um, but I would say like my family. I would say like a like a mango would be mm-hmm. one of the good ones. Mm-hmm. I I do like um, mashed brew banana mm-hmm. with avocado oil to kind of like mash it because you know we can't use butter. Right. Um, or I'll make my own butter, but you know what I'm saying? You got to tune into my, you know, my cooking channel, you know what I'm saying? No, the tricks, you know what I'm saying? But you know, outside of that, um, we do like the, the, the burro bananas, we mash it. Um, I'll do like a little bit of coconut milk in there and some avocado oil just to kind of get like that creaminess and like, Mm -hmm. you know, the flavors going. Definitely add some like onions, some pickled onions. Instead of using white vinegar, I use key lime, which Mm. still works the same. Okay. On and taste the same, and then instead of using salami, I'll do like mushroom caps, like the oyster mushroom caps. Oyster mushroom, okay. Yeah, and I'll fry them. They actually look like salami when you when you finish cooking them. How do you crispy? Huh? How do you just pan fry them? Okay. With a little bit of grapeseed oil. Okay. And then um, you know if you want to do an egg, you can do a chickpea egg, mm-hmm. but it's, it's it's more complicated when you do that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So just stick with the mushroom or the cheese. Okay. Um, and, and the cheese is more difficult. Like you got to actually make the cheese. Right. Again, tune into my channel for that. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, they also really, really love my pastas. Like okay. they love pasta. Mm-hmm. So they'd be like, Ooh, this is so good. Or like a good lasagna. But like I could make a good pasta alone too, but just, um, I just make some walnut meat mm-hmm. and some like mushrooms crumble them together. And that's kind of like our ground beef situation. Okay. And then of course make your own cherry tomato, um, paste sauce and then you just do the blue bananas like it's really not hard Mm -hmm. if you simplify it with the ingredients that you have available right and then get to know like 
I think a good chef is not somebody that knows how to cook well, because I think like everybody knows how to cook. Mm -hmm. Anybody can learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, but a good chef to me is somebody that knows how to pair food together and mm -hmm. knows how to work. Like food is a relationship. You gotta mm -hmm. you gotta know how to marinate and merge you me how the thing. To, how to massage my kale? I yes. Think. Yeah. Huge you have different. to massage huge the kale. Different. You gotta make love to it. Yeah. It's like a woman. Yeah. You know get in there. Like, <laughs> you gotta get her moist. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully. Respectfully. <laughs> we talk about food here. Nasty. Um, like I was singing. But you yeah, have to you marinate the kale. You have to marinate it and give it you some gotta love. You got to get a little, give it some love. You gotta, it, food is energy. And mm -hmm. if you put love into your food, you're, when you taste it, you're going to be like, bro. Mm -hmm. What is your love language? You know? I would say, what, like, what are the fives? Like, physical. So, so it's physical touch, emotional. words of affirmation, mm. gift giving, mm. um, I'm like all five. quality time, Ooh. and what's the last one? Acts of service. Acts of service. Mm. As a kid, like, you mm -hmm. know, my mom taught me that, you know, act of service is, mm -hmm. is a way of love. So that's, mm -hmm. that would be my first one. I think same for me. That would be yeah. the first one. But I, I'm, I, what really stimulates me is mentally. Yes. Like, I like to digest you mentally. Mm -hmm. I want to know, like, what excites you, what gets you, like. Do you find that intense for people? Because I feel like a huge part of the reason that I, I like, joked. Okay, I can't say this. My bad. Me? Let me put my business out there. <laughs> Um, do, does, does that ever come across as intense to some people? Because I'm definitely clearly like a fan of deep conversations and I think no. like, if yeah. you, if you don't know how to hold a deep conversation, we are not talking. Yeah. I felt like. I, there's no way. I gotta, mm -hmm. I, you gotta move me in such a way because I, the way I view myself is like, I'm, I'm, I'm the best that's out there. You no offense. 2.0. If you can find better than me, by all means, mm -hmm. go ahead and get it. Mm -hmm. But I view myself as a very high pedestal, not only what I bring to the table as a woman, but who I am as a person, period. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what I want, how I want it, and I'm a boss. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I got my own money, I got my own everything. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to make me add on to your life, which I know I will, mm -hmm. you have to present to me that you are even capable to handle my type of mentality. Mm -hmm. Because you could, you, could, you could get the flashiness, that's cool for right now, but what's really going to keep me intrigued to you is your mental mm -hmm. and like how I can connect with you mentally. If I can connect with you mentally, we don't even gotta have sex. <laughs> Cause in my mind, you've already you done it. You did what you did, baby. <laughs> you you did it, girl. You said it, boy. You out here, all completely. Cause but but that's and if you can do that, then you got me forever. Yeah. If you can really captivate me mentally, I'm single, y'all. For real. No, because people, it's so no, but easy. I'm really people yeah. think that they have to like get this watch or this belt no. or this watch, and it's like, it's, no. don't make and it so And if you're easy. dating yeah. somebody who's completely comfortable with themselves, those things don't really matter. Right. The, the materialistic things is really what starts to add value to people who don't see themselves mm -hmm. as valuable. Mm -hmm. So having a Louis Vuitton or some Gucci sneakers is going to make them feel valuable mm -hmm. because they feel like having like a boss. On, yeah, mm -hmm. having this on is going to make them look and feel better. But realistically, the true value is within yourself mm -hmm. and what you hold and your magic and your essence mm -hmm. and your mind. Like that, like what you got into your mind, like mm -hmm. that right there. Mm -hmm. Your creativity, your process, like how how you handle situations. Like that to me, that's sexy. Like I want to know that because you don't know. And then also if you're dating somebody or if you're in a relationship or getting to know somebody, and you know, you're looking for a partnership, not mm -hmm. somebody that just your boyfriend and girlfriend, but somebody you can grow with, you mm -hmm. have to look, get to know their mental. Because their mental would never change, it would just evolve. It's never gonna go backwards. Cause once you learn something, you're not gonna wanna like hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like go back. Like if you know this, like if like if once like, like just like I said, like if you're woke, you can't unwaken yourself. Like mm -hmm. you can't go back and go back to sleep. Like you could try mm -hmm. and choose to to pick ignorance over truth, but Reality is once you know the truth, you know the truth. Mm. And there's no way of going back. Like that is what it is. Period. <laughs> Sis. So like growing up, you grew up in New York, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You work in makeup now, right? Mm -hmm. Growing up, what were the standards of beauty? What was your like how were you introduced to beauty? Did your mom was she involved in makeup? What was that like for you? My mom was definitely not involved in makeup. My mm -hmm. mom was more like 
in clothing. Okay. She had purses and perfumes. Like, that's my mom's bag. Like, mm -hmm. I want to look and smell like $1,000. Okay. Um, she wasn't more about makeup, but one thing that my mom did taught me, even that I still do now, um, in my beauty routine is to wash my face every morning, mm -hmm. to wash my face every single night. Mm -hmm. Before we used to put like the Avon, you know, the Avon creams on, right. we didn't elevate a little bit, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, do like my facial and my skincare routine in the morning and at night. Uh, make sure that I bathe at least twice a day, mm -hmm. you know? Um, make sure that I got lotion in my body, that I spray some perfume. So mm -hmm. that's something I do all the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that some women don't really tend mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. and it wasn't until like I, I was in a relationship and he was like you do this every day huh like every morning every night I'm like <laughs> yeah like right. don't everybody else do it and mm -hmm. he's like no I'm mm -hmm. like what that's crazy but in my mind that's how my mom did it that's how my aunts did it mm -hmm. and for me like being feminine or, or being in feminine energy I thrive in a lot because my family is mostly mostly women mm -hmm. I have 10 aunts and two uncles. Oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. My grandma was out here. You know what I'm saying? Representing. Uh, <laughs> she was out here. So I have, you know, I, I, growing up, I thrived in feminine energy. Mm. Now, when it came to masculine energy, hmm. I was more like intense. I was more intimidated by masculine energy because I didn't know how to like function around it. Right. Or oh, I didn't know how to still thrive being feminine okay. while also being next to being tapping a, into that yeah right so it wasn't until i got older and then i started like discovering parts of myself and being like oh, okay like i'm a hustler i'm a boss that's yeah. my masculinity in me sure but i like being sexy i like mm -hmm. to cook i like to clean like that's mm -hmm. that's my feminine side so mm -hmm. it's like really embodying both of them really mm -hmm. just made me appreciate who i am as a as a woman because sometimes like a lot of the times we're like, as a woman, we're told too many things, like how we're supposed to look, how we're mm -hmm. supposed to act, what we're supposed to do when we have kids. Like, it's just so many dictating. Mm -hmm. And I just like let myself be. So some days, like, you know, I still do like the skincare and all that stuff. But like some days I dress in sweatpants. Some mm -hmm. days I'm put more effort, like, you know, and things like that. Now I don't, now that I, I changed my diet and I'm more cautious about the things that I put in my body and on my skin, I don't wear makeup as much. Mm -hmm. But before, makeup was more of a self-expression thing for me. I didn't really care about how, like, I loved the way I looked, but I never was, like, fully confident in it. Mm -hmm. So, like, putting a little wing liner to, like, make my eyes pop. I think, like, my eyes and my hair and like certain parts of my body it's what like makes me feel like beautiful mm -hmm. so i used to always like accentuate those things mm -hmm. and it wasn't until like being around my neighborhood that it was kind of like point out like oh like my family is like you got big lips i'm like i got big lips yeah. like what this is not big like mm -hmm. but they don't have my family doesn't have big lips which mm -hmm. is so crazy to mm -hmm. think that but it, it it all like kind of reflects. So like in my neighborhood, beauty was was a big thing. Long nails, hoop earrings, mm -hmm. soup 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 baby hers. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Got the head of baby hers. <laughs> you know, really on point. Mm -hmm. um, but that was growing up in a predominantly black cult, like black community. Mm -hmm. In Dominican Republic, it's a different, you know, mm -hmm. wearing your curls and your pajong is like beautiful. Mm -hmm. Not wearing no makeup or minimal makeup is is you know it's a culture so honestly for me it was kind of hard because i was like trying to embrace my dominican parts of you know like just being who i was mm -hmm. but then i also wanted to fit in in, in a black community mm -hmm. and i didn't look like most of the girls around me mm -hmm. like my hair texture was different my skin color is definitely lighter mm -hmm. um you know so it was it was hard at first to kind of like even define like what beauty was to me or what I found beautiful and it wasn't until I got older and then I was just like you know what like I'm just beautiful because I'm just beautiful mm -hmm. like it is it, not nothing is it, I don't have to have a title around my image mm -hmm. to look the way that I to be the way that I am and even like embracing my beauty was one of the hardest thing for me mm -hmm. because it wasn't more about how I looked but how I viewed myself mm. so it is definitely when you change your perspective on how you view yourself you start to like look and feel different like right. i've i look at myself now with my little no butt mm -hmm. and my little body and my little petite little self mm -hmm. i look at myself like if i was 
And it's crazy that I view myself like this. Hi, have you ever viewed yourself in the mirror like the baddest bitch in this world? Of course. Not. But you look in the mirror and you like, this ain't adding up. <laughs> Something ain't adding up here because the way that I view myself <laughs> is not what I see. But you know what? Yeah. What I see ain't bad either. Mm -hmm. It's just really what it is. It's just like sitting yourself. I got. I sit in the mirror at least. Well, if you guys can see, I have plenty of mirrors in my house, mm -hmm. and I have affirmations that I like to repeat in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it took me a while to kind of like just reprogram my mind to mm -hmm. be like, you look beautiful. Because in my family, be like, I do see the flaca, like you so skinny. Right. And it's like, cause you know, cause they're used to being thicker. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Just because it's different doesn't mean there's something wrong mm -hmm. with it. So I had to really program a lot because I was the only person in my family, one, that thinks different, which is one, why my success and my life is different than theirs. But two, I made up my own rules. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that having curly hair is sexy. Mm -hmm. Like, I think just taking care of your skin is sexy. Mm -hmm. You know, like, good hygiene mm -hmm. is sexy. Like, mm -hmm. psst. That's the, probably the most sexiest thing you could have. You could meet the most beautiful girl, and if her breath stink, what you gonna do? Hmm? Right. What you gonna do? Right. You gonna cut that out? Exactly. <laughs> so it's just like taking care of your body, taking care of who you are, and embracing just entire like your entire being, your curly mm -hmm. hair, your skin color, your smile, your eyes. Just like loving small parts about yourself can eventually lead you up to loving your entire self. And people can tell when you love yourself. Like, oh, yeah. I think when people are like, oh my gosh, like why doesn't this person think I'm beautiful? It's like, do you think you're beautiful? Yeah. Okay, then why would anybody else? You but know? like no, no man wants to be around a woman that's like, Oh, does this dress look nice on me? Like you gotta keep questioning mm. your beauty and mm. your essence as a that's feminine. Because that's what we're taught. Like yeah. I don't think people should feel bad for that. We no. need to recognize, like, oh wait, I don't need. No, your... I'm gonna buy this dress <laughs> because I think I'm gonna look good in it. Period, sis. <laughs> right. Not because oh, what is the world gonna think when I put this on? Mm -hmm. And it's like. The world is the world and it's going to have its opinion right. regardless of what you put on and what you don't put on. So I do have a question for you. This is something, so I've lived in New York since I was 18 mm -hmm. and I do struggle with this where it's like, okay, so I'm supposed to be this woman who goes and walks through this world and is supposed to be beautiful to the world standards. And I'm supposed to be confident and embrace myself while also not attracting unwanted energy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially just living in New York, taking the train, like, yeah, whatever. So I will definitely feel like the more you walk into your own power, the more you do have to protect yourself. Right. Um, but that also just comes with creating a sacred place for yourself to come home to. Mm -hmm. Like, my home is my sacred place. So mm -hmm. I come home every single night and, you know, I stage myself, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then I, I write positive things about myself because, you know, Sometimes being at, you can't help it. Like, mm -hmm. men are going mm -hmm. to look at you in many different ways. Mm -hmm. It could be a good looking or it can be a very, like, ooh, like, yeah. you're being super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But that's what comes with being feminine, you mm -hmm. know. That's the most beautiful thing about having feminine energy. It's just the state of being who you are. Right. It doesn't have to be something made up or false. It's just the state of you. Like, mm -hmm. Just you being beautiful, your hair being it is, your skin, your body shape, like the way that God created you mm -hmm. itself is perfect. Mm -hmm. And you just embodying that and realizing that, that's what really turns on that like mechanism of people viewing you in a certain way mm -hmm. and kind of just being like, you know, magnetically like charged or want to be like come talk to you or some right. kind of way. You know, because if like if you're confident. And you come into a room mm -hmm. and you're 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 gonna talk with confidence. People mm -hmm. are gonna be like, Wow, who is this woman? It's mm -hmm. not really most of the looks plays a part mm -hmm. for the most part in this generation. But what really captivates the eye more than anything is like who you are, how you talk, mm -hmm. the feeling you bring in your when you aura. walk into your room. Right. Yeah, like how you make people feel and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I think that's more important. So if you feel like I wanna put out good energy and I want people to feel safe, mm -hmm. that people will still probably be attracted to you, but it won't come off as that I gotta protect myself because when you when yeah. you feel that way, then that's kind of like the energy that you will You're attract. You're stifling yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like I know a lot of girls, especially during the summertime, if oh, it's girl. hot out and you want to wear a dress, you also have to like wear that dress. Pack. But being real to protect yourself, being safe, you can't yeah. get on the train. And I just think that's so sad that we do live in a world like that, where it's like, dang, like you can't even take the train to go to church in a dress that you're gonna wear to church, to church yeah. because you have to hide your femininity that you yeah. work so hard to build at home when like the world is telling you look like this, this. talk like this mm -hmm. you know what I mean I think it's just balance like if you know yeah. you live in a neighborhood that's crazy 
then wear that skirt with some stockings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Still wear it. Right. Don't take away what you want to wear. Don't not create, don't remove an experience that you want to experience because mm -hmm. of your fear of how it's going to affect other people. Sure. Live your experiences because it's you. It embodies you. And when you do that, God, God will probably have you walk down that street and nothing won't even happen you. to right. you because you're embodying that. And the energy that you're even focusing on is nowhere near negativity. Right. You know, I'm wearing this skirt because I look good mm -hmm. and I feel good. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it makes it makes the boys come to the yard, then, mm -hmm. then, then it makes the boys come to the yard. What you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but it's, you're, yeah. it's not your intention. Right. So when your intention, it, it's not to be like, you know, seductive mm -hmm. or like, you know, just be like, mm -hmm. Little freaky girl, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And your intention is more of being more sexy, being more sensual, being more of yourself. Right. Then that's the energy you will give off. You might have a few haters, mm -hmm. but it's okay. I mean, I would say this working with successful women in the industry and it being with women who how can I say this without being crazy? Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me grab my crystal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, just to say, I would say when you're working, you know, in an industry where the artist is the main focus idea mm -hmm. and us as a team, as a collective, we're just like the background people, mm -hmm. it's also kind of hard for us to like show our true essence and mm. sh show our true arts and our true talents and how magnetic and beautiful we are as people because we're all our energy oh. and focus is being put to this pedestal which is our celebrities mm -hmm. you know which is normally what happens mm -hmm. and for me especially working with celebrities and being in those rooms I don't view myself any different than them mm -hmm. so it's easy for me to be around them because it makes them don't feel like like weird right it's like oh i'm just with my, i'm just with anna you mm -hmm. know it's like okay cool and you're like this is this is a, a worldwide like legendary superstar next right. to you but to me it's like that person worked hard to earn that success mm -hmm. so i don't view myself any different from them mm -hmm. the moment that you start to kind of like detach yourself from viewing yourself anything higher than because you're working for a certain person mm -hmm. or you're not working for a certain person is when you really start to kind of like demolish your own magic mm -hmm. and you're like start to view yourself like less than so mm -hmm. then you you show less than you know what right. I'm saying so like for me I view myself as like like I said the best thing that's out there mm -hmm. so I you know I attract that, that. right yeah I right. attract that opportunities people and that, people will recognize that like yeah. I think that if you're around people who you do feel like you have to kind of dim your light um you're just gonna kind of stay stuck in that, but when you start to recognize your own light, you're going to attract people who recognize that within you. Yeah. So it's like what you said earlier, really holding yourself to the standard that you expect for other people to treat you. Treat you, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like, like with me, like especially with my business and stuff, like I don't ever want to become famous. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to ever become famous. Mm -hmm. I want to be successful at what I do, but I don't want my my success to be all wrapped around my image and who I am. Right. Because that's normally when you become a celebrity, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like it's about you and what you do and what you say. And, it, and it's not about me. It's about, you know, what's, what's God doing through me mm -hmm. and my service to the community. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like, oh, a celebrity, like people view me as this like pedestal person because mm -hmm. I'm human. I make mistakes. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not out here like trying to sell you a dream. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to enlighten you and make you realize that you have your own power and your own light to become better than me and better than anything you could possibly envision. A lot of the times we don't really view ourselves like that mm -hmm. um, because it's it's never around us. Like mm -hmm. we see we idolize people on television. We idolize even God, like mm -hmm. something that we've never seen, but we can feel, you know what I'm saying? And it's also like me growing up, like humility was taught to us very yeah. ingrained into our brain, right? Yeah. Which I think is a good thing. But then as you get older, like now as an adult, it's like affirmations, what? S standing in front of a mirror and telling myself this, it's like so foreign to me. Yeah. So I think that like, it's important to recognize the power behind humility, but also like really owning yourself yeah and, i yeah. mean you have to have a good balance of both mm -hmm. like i feel like even successful people like like you know really successful people they are super at one point they had to become extremely selfish mm -hmm. they had to do what they felt like was right for themselves mm -hmm. they had to um 
created like a mindset and a discipline that it may not work for a lot of people around them. Um, and that's normally what happens with success. Like people be like, oh, you're changing or, or just evolving period in mm -hmm. life. And it's like, you're changing, but it's like, yeah. Big I'm not, supposed am to I supposed to be like 12 <laughs> years old for the rest of my life? Right, like, right. No, I'm supposed to evolve. I'm supposed to grow. Um, but again, really when it comes to yourself and like loving yourself, it's really just like turning on that mirror that's in front of you without it having like having the mirror and just reflecting every week or just every day. Like, what did I do yesterday that I can do today? that was different than yesterday, that's gonna make you better. Maybe mm -hmm. like working out five more minutes or 10 more minutes mm -hmm. or reading a book or mm -hmm. it, whatever like that is for you, do it. Mm -hmm. And then eventually like whatever is created for you and whatever is meant for you, you don't have to rush. It's mm -hmm. gonna come to you at, at divine timing. Mm -hmm. um, and whoever you are at that time is who you are, you are supposed to be. Like I never was like super confident on myself at all. But there was also like this really strong voice inside of me when I was a kid that like just didn't shut up. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, bro, I wanna fit in. Like I just wanna look like these people around me and mm -hmm. I wanna feel normal. But mm -hmm. it's like, at that time I wasn't feeling normal, but it was like, it's cause I'm not. I'm not supposed to fit in. I'm supposed mm -hmm. to stand out. I'm supposed to be the trailblazer. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to like provoke thoughts. I'm supposed to like make people like feel and think different. And it wasn't until I was like, okay, well, I can't shut this voice inside of me, mm -hmm. so let me listen to it. Mm -hmm. And when I started to listen to it, I'm like, wow. That is the biggest I'm the thing. dopest person. Mm -hmm. Like, I should show people that I'm funny, but mm -hmm. like, I don't wanna, I don't, you know, and it's just like the moment you start to hesitate, that's the moment that literally, like, people feel that more. Mm -hmm. Like, people will feel or remember something negative you did before they remember anything positive. Right. So, to me, I always try to move in that state of gratitude, that state of confidence, that state of, like, you know, like, myself, you mm -hmm. know, so that no matter what I do, no matter what I say, mm -hmm. it's all going to come back to me the way I want it to because it's a representation of who I am mm -hmm. and the things that I like to do. So, like... For example, like if I like cooking and I'm happy in that, and like that makes me happy, like that's a part of who I am. So mm -hmm. if somebody be like, oh, I don't like your food, okay. <laughs> you don't like that. my food, like I, right. I, I, that's not gonna take me or, you know, steal away my joy mm -hmm. of something that I feel like is a part of who I am just because you don't like it. I'm not meant to be liked and digest to anyone, mm -hmm. to be honest. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I embody my true self is who I am. And if you, if you don't like it, then. Right. Were you ever, did you ever find yourself around people where you did feel like you were dimming your light or you felt misunderstood and how did you kind of... In my childhood that? I did. Yeah. Because I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm older, I feel like I can choose and be like, if somebody don't like me, then it's up to them. Mm -hmm. Before I used to think it was more about me. Like mm -hmm. if somebody didn't like me, I thought that I was doing something wrong. So right. I was always overcompensating them, like mm -hmm. trying to make sure that they're good and make them smile and make sure that they're happy so that they, you know, that they feel good around me. Mm -hmm. But it, realistically, it was just they don't feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. So they're reflecting that light back at me. Mm -hmm. And normally when you don't like something about somebody, it's normally something you don't like about yourself too. Yes. So mm -hmm. everything goes back to looking back at yourself and, and really like how you view yourself. So I'm very grateful that we are having this interview yeah. and that we are having this conversation because it needs to be t talked about, mm -hmm. it needs to be shared. But also I really hope that people actually like just influence themselves to kind of just like turn that light bulb on mm -hmm. and be like, hmm, she says something that like makes some sense yeah. and I should really like go back. Because once, if I can make one person just Mm -hmm. look back inwards from this video, mm -hmm. then we both did our job here. To and honest. that's what I love your platform, what you use your social media for. That's like the whole reason I wanted to talk to you <laughs> in the first place. It's because I see how you use it. You recognize that you have a platform and you're not just using it to like show off a type of lifestyle or this or that. Like you will take pictures of what you're reading or mm -hmm. you'll like take a picture to like remind us that like you're outside. And it's not like a performative form of self-care. It's like you genuinely like want other people to tap into what you're doing yeah. so they can feel what you're feeling. Yeah, right? and a lot of the time like what I like about especially my platform, especially my makeup page, mm -hmm. because that's the platform that I've had the longest. I've mm -hmm. been doing it for 10 years. So I can honestly say that like 
people always tell me, like, I love how transparent you are mm -hmm. with your journey. And I show the ugliness and the good side. Mm -hmm. And I like a lot of social media don't like to show the bad side. Right. Like, I was homeless. Like, I was very broke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I was very depressed. I was definitely suicidal. Like, I had all those thoughts. I, I was this person at one point. Mm -hmm. But it was me not wanting to be that person no more. Mm -hmm. And me wanting to literally save myself. Because it was literally either continue to please people mm. and continue to live this false life in my head to satisfy other people when everybody is benefiting out of my life mm -hmm. but myself. How does, yeah. that don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make no sense. Like how, how are other people benefiting from my life, mm -hmm. my essence, my You're being? You're like, tiny bit of light that's left. And I'm like, right. and, and I'm trying to keep it alive mm -hmm. so hard for other people, but it's like, no. That real life, you got to live for yourself, right. one. Before you cook for anybody else, before you give that message of advice to somebody else, give it to yourself first. Mm -hmm. Because you can't keep pouring out of an empty cup. Amen. You know what I'm saying? You can never do that. And the moment you do, you will run so dry, girl. Mm -hmm. There will be no type of water that will mm -hmm. crush your thirst. <laughs> okay? And I'm being the realest that I could ever be right now. Okay. <laughs> because the hardest thing ever is to pull, especially for women, because we are we are naturally givers. Yeah. And we feel things in a different frequency. Mm -hmm. Like our love for other people and the way we want people around us to be and feel mm -hmm. is very like powerful. Mm -hmm. So for me, it I didn't I didn't want to stop being this person because I knew that certain people were not going to benefit them from this thing no more. Right. And a lot of my old friends benefited from the my lack of self-love. Mm. They got overcompensated Hold on, like say crazy. That again. <laughs> say that again. My friend, my old friends and mm -hmm. a lot of people in my past benefited from my lack of self-love. Wow. Like I was able to give more of myself than I should have never had wow. to those people because I didn't love myself mm -hmm. and I felt like other people's approval or other people's you know, I guess love for me was my love for myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, and it wasn't until I stopped loving myself and I was in the darkest place that I was able to pull myself out and realize that the, really the only love that's actually important is your, it's your own love. Mm -hmm. It's yourself for your, your own entire being. Mm -hmm. And not just your entire being, but like your mind, like it really starts mm -hmm. here. Like that is literally like the tree mm -hmm. like the seed you know and then mm -hmm. our body is the tree like our arms are mm -hmm. are the branches and our blessings and the things that we put out in the earth is leaves that eventually fall and then you know and then it falls or down to whoever there. yeah whoever mm -hmm. is you know beneath us or i wouldn't even say beneath us but who are learning from us and are mm -hmm. inspiring us and who hold us in this pedestal like of knowledge they're learning and you know our blessings are coming down you know, as we grow. So definitely, like, if you able to unlock your mind and just love the way, like, just train your thoughts. Like, I love myself. Like, you're beautiful. Like, just saying those affirmations in your head is what eventually would provide you, like, the love that you need for yourself and for other people. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, my God, I got a little too real. <laughs>